But that's how you, that's how you know you like somebody really likes you when they need to you know, come over to their house and they break out the sipping mayo. <laughs> wait, wait, can I can I can I offer you a a, a snifter of mayo? Yes. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news reviews. I was thinking about snacks and clacks, man. Um, <laughs> snacks and clacks, baby. Snacks and clacks, baby. <laughs> reviews. And most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Um, I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Axel, switching the bits all under Linux and all ends. Joined every week by our team Canadian podcaster, one Jordan Swing, keeping nice and frosty, and the man staying up late past his bedtime, Pedro Mateus. On the Isle Hello. of Britannia, and everyone in Shot Realm Dynamic helping us form Cocaine Voltron. And it, it's just like a codependent Voltron with canes. So, why do you close your eyes when we make love? <laughs> Get the canes down. <laughs> why, why do you close your eyes when you cane me every night? <laughs> but I, it's sugar cane, baby. And then it's extra sticky. Use a wooden cane, damn it. No. <laughs> It's candy okay. canes or it's candy canes it's or nothing. Button. All right. Good. 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 So, before uh, we get started. Something, something like my candy cane. Before we get started, we like to see what's going on in each other's life. Organs. <laughs> Baby, I got a new toy. I got a thing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Hipster audio equipment. Stupid expensive. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. even the lower end stuff. They're just like, how much money is that? How much are you willing to pay? Oh, boy. But I did manage to get a hold of this. Um, using it right now. Speaking of wiggly man physics, look at that. That's a, that's a slightly different shade of red than the controller. <laughs> it is. It, it, I have, and I have, you also have wiggly man physics. I have yeah. three shades of red. This is a ginormous, <laughs> super heavy brick of a preamp. It is a Golden Age Pre-73 Junior. It's the basic bitch model. But Guitar Center, as we spent like... 30 minutes in the after shows and last week like shopping um this wasn't part of their going out of business sell but uh i got this for like 100 bucks it's like yoink so uh it's just a it, it's not like a knee uh, people are like that's oh, a 1073 no no i've of course I opened it up I'm like can i fix this thing if it breaks i'm like yeah it's all the screen components but i, I would say like neve inspired but i'll uh I'll, I'll do like a comparison with some other preem somebody will enjoy watching that i'm sure but yeah that's pretty much it for me oh i did get some things at the consignment shop because i have things i bought two of the same things no yeah i i don't typically go to them you know now with the covid and all that fun stuff but i was in near one i'm like might as well as i'm over here and i do the thing where if i can't find anything i'll spite buy something mm. it's like I'm, i didn't waste this, <laughs> this is how i get a. if you ever see me in the videos of the cup that's a spite buy cup just one. And I did it because there was a complete set and I was that asshole. I was like, mm. I'll get this one. Um, have you ever seen these? They go like under doors. Oh, I just have hardwood floors throughout the house, but you know, I get like a gap, like six inches mm-hmm. under all the doors and winter time, like my rooms, extra rooms are just empty. I don't keep shit. I don't keep them warm. I keep the vents closed. I'm like, but they had the little thing that you slide under the doors. It's got like styrofoam on both sides and, it's our stop cloth. No, no, you slide it up under the door, and there's like a side on it, like fills the gap under it and fills gaps. Okay, so and yeah. it's like flexible, so you can run cable underneath it, but like, no, no, it completely puts a block under it. Huh, yeah, it's like a tube Doesn't on that- one side, a tube on the other, and a piece of cloth that connects them, and you <sighs> just slide it up under the door, and it keeps everything like you don't, you can't pass a joint under it anymore. As, as you do. You gotta, you gotta go story. through the keyhole now. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, I bought two of those. That was my spite buy. What about you, Jordan? Anything new? Uh, yeah, there's a couple things new. Um, I started, uh, I streamed a little bit on uh, Friday. I'm doing the five-week Gygax 75 challenge. Gary Gygax, the inventor of Dungeons & Dragons, wrote an article about a year after he published the first version describing how to build a campaign setting the Gygax way. So I thought that might be a fun little writing exercise to stream. It's a five-week project so I can do it. And What exactly yeah. is it? Because that so, is all moon speak to me. Okay, so like when, when you play Dungeons & Dragons, usually there's a setting where like the adventure or whatever takes place. Uh, so this is this is a th- way to like make it and like it one 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 of the challenges at what for one week is to like make a dungeon and make a town next to it and the first the first week was like compiling all your sources finding like all the inspiration try, trying to like 
whittle it down to like a, a like a four to seven like point pitch. So that's that's what I did on stream. So if you if I'm doing that on uh, Fridays from two to five. So if you just need some background noise, it's going to be me talking a lot. So it's like a writing it's, exercise. Yeah, it's 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 a writing exercise. All right. Um, and like I I find that. I'm a lot better at like putting ideas down on paper when I'm talking at something because okay. it forces me to like articulate it in a sentence as so opposed to just having no everyone ideas. next Friday, two to five, show up, fuck with them. How about yeah, you? Fuck with them. <laughs> <Pretty> much. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I was doing is like, can I do nothing but type move for three? Uh, yeah, I probably can. Let's see. <laughs> Interpretive move. And we got copyright struck. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just waiting for Pedro to like kick in here. No. Uh yeah, no. For me, uh the week was mostly uneventful, uh, right up until Wednesday rolled around. And in the middle of the afternoon, Nori was eating bowl of cereal, as one is off to do. You see, there's your problem. Pretty pebbles. <laughs> some cinnamon toast crunch that's the thing i had that very same cereal uh that morning and nothing happened but uh no when nori went to it one of her teeth just went you know what no <laughs> and all i hear was the uh the spoon drop on the floor nori going <laughs> so all right call 111 try to get uh emergency dentist appointment as quickly as possible isn't it 999 over yeah, there? Yeah, I was about to say. What? There's two. The 999 is for the emergency one, where you want either the police or ambulance to show up. Oh, you called the there. bitch emergency number. Uh, yeah, thought, the 111. Like the, the, the stonecutters were like, oh, yeah, we'll give you the real number to like call. It's 912. <laughs> this, this way they won't steal your wallet. <laughs> But yeah, no, 111 is the one that they encourage you to call first to figure out what you should be doing. And they said, okay, we'll try to find you like a dentist appointment uh, with like the emergency thing. Two hours went by, nothing. Nori was in severe pain. She could barely even function. So it's like, okay, we're just going to go to the A&E uh, hospital here because I'm tight. And um we got there she went in uh she sent me a text because i couldn't go in because of all the restrictions uh only the patients are allowed into the waiting rooms and she's like oh they gave me coding ooh heavy duty nice <laughs> so yeah doctor uh had a look gave her a bunch of pills she's uh we went back home after she was done and yeah, now, now she's okay. She's uh, still on the codeine because there's still pain there, and that won't go away until we actually get to take her to now, the dentist. Pedro, <laughs> Pedro, on behalf of everyone listening and uh, watching currently, I'm asking what they did. You finish the bowl of cereal? <laughs> what, did, it, did it get soggy by the end? Did you come back and it was just all disintegrated into the milk, and you're just like single tear. <laughs> no, no, he, no, it was there was no milk. It was just cereal, and yes, I finished it. <laughs> I, I was about to say, I, I'm envisioning Nori's like, ah, oh, jeez, ah, oh, trying to deal with it, and Pedro just walks over, like, you can finish that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just, she's just I didn't like, do that at the time, she's, but she's yes. in the fetal position, just like writhing in pain, and Pedro just like picks up the bowl, just starts eating his fucking Fruit Loops. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, he but yeah, the no, there's thing. already uh, that disappointment booked for next week, and uh, she will uh, be attending that. I'll make damn sure of that. <laughs> well, do, do we need to get a dental appointment for the horse? No, his his teeth have rotten away. Oh, no. Yeah, that's why you need to floss more. It's the steam. Boom, check it out. Hey. Dual swipe, man. <laughs> Pedro got a new controller. He's still playing with it, but you bought it you bought that thing so early that you're you're still waiting for it to, you know, start working as a controller. I mean, it, it already uh last week it already worked because Valve just basically went out of their way. It's like, you know what? We don't have it working properly yet, but we're just going to make sure that uh Steam and all the games that you launch from Steam sees it as a PS4 controller. And now uh, they've actually added some additional functionality. And instead of just saying PS4 controller dual sense, it says PS5 controller dual sense. They changed the so, number. Yeah. Excellent. It, yeah, they, they changed the number and 
They say that they added uh, LED trackpad rumble and gyro functionality. The LEDs, I couldn't get them to change color at all. Oh, uh, throw it but away. But <laughs> the I need more blinky on actual, my controller. Right. <laughs> I didn't try the gyro either, but the the trackpad it actually works, and I found that uh, found it out by mistake. Obviously, because I was playing a hat in time. It's uh, we're going to be talking about that bundle later on in the show. But I was playing and I accidentally hit the uh, the touchpad and it took a screenshot. It's like, what? When did that happen? <laughs> so I clicked it again. Another screenshot. Oh, so then I started swiping and doing things like, oh, OK, so it does things that that that's good. <laughs> While fascinating, uh, the favorite thing in the link, see, they've added directional swipe mode so we can finally get some Tinder up on that bitch. No, man. No, man. Yes. It's going to be real handy for all those visual novels. And the, the, those, those folks aren't using Tinder. It's going <laughs> to. <laughs> it's not, not, not non intentional. Oh, well, all right. Fine. Okay. But yeah, I, I, one I, other thing I noticed was that the uh, they changed the icons. So now that you actually see the uh, like the white icons that have so poor contrast, I can't even show them on camera with the light shining on it. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, for people playing on like big picture mode on a really old TV that doesn't have a whole lot of contrast or a really terrible monitor. That's uh that's not going to look very well also the um circle and square icons are minuscule when compared to the cross and triangle something is not right there tiny circle (laughs) yeah fine i don't know don Don called us a triangle i don't know so 51 bits (laughs) thank you very much don (laughs) check this out though Mango HUD, there's a workaround. I went looking for this because you might have noticed if you use the Mango HUDs and, uh, and you're playing around with the latest protons, that shit don't work. Um, this comes from R Linux underscore gaming. This was posted a month ago. You know, I've noticed, you know, with like Proton Next with the containerized versions of Proton, no love. This is a very simple workaround, man. Uh, there's two ways to do it. This, you can base what's this effectively fair to say copying it into the container, or you can just disable the, uh, check all together right yeah mm-hmm. yeah that, that that that's kind of the main thing if it's it's growing the things problem, when you're working. the problem with straight up disabling it is anytime that gets updated and you're like oh right 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 yeah, yeah, gotta no, i have to it. go and change that file back <laughs> the, the 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 fast way of doing this is yeah just making sure that the steam runtime has access to those library files when they're initializing the container then they'll be there this is kind of like one of the growing pain things of Switching to containerized runtimes, step one, make sure that all the stuff you need is accessible by the container. But we, we were talking about that a bit in the pre-pre-super shows, and, and I think I think Valve just needs to be like, here's a folder where you can just dump your shit, and then it's in the, the container, we'll see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just, just make it make it nice and obvious. I think that's like the lowest friction workaround, as opposed to like, say, shipping Mango HUD directly in the, the runtime. I no, I want to build, I want a Mango HUD button. <laughs> A mango HUD, yeah, well, either a button or you right-click, go to properties and tick the box. It's like, show mango HUD. I don't yeah, know what it is, I, but I'd be down for that. I, I'm still <laughs> very firmly in the can't believe it's not butter relationship phase of um, DXVK. I'm like, I'm running this with Vol- I want my little HUD up there. I want my frame timers. I want a little bouncy graph. And mm. um, yeah, that's there. That's a thing. It's a workaround. But yeah, I, 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 to George's point, I, I would like to see an easier, like, valve curated way of getting that in there because that's a very, very, very handy piece of kit. But Indeed. Speaking of the protons. Yes. yes Glorious Egrol, our favorite Red Hat employee who is constantly making wine updates, has a new version <laughs> out. It's 521 GE1. This is on the new wine hotness. Um, well, they fixed your SAM issue. Yeah, they, they did. Um, it's also, uh, that's that's the big one, is uh, Sirius Sam, the flickering is now gone under NVIDIA. Also, you can launch it natively under Vulkan. One thing I did not get to do today was I wanted to do a side-by-side benchmark of like DXVK versus the native Vulkan and see which one is better. Um, but I did not get a chance to do that. Maybe I'll get it done. Oh, no, there's uh, some things in all caps. Yes, R- <laughs> RDR doesn't work. Full screen hack doesn't work uh, because this is built on like the newer version of Wine that uses the container or the newer version of Proton that uses the containerized runtime. Um, you're still going to need that stuff. So the Mango HUD 
stuff that we were just talking about applies here. I gave yes. uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, a shot with this uh, via Lutris and uh, VKD3D Proton. It makes me no, happy no, that no you luck. have a, the that game because yes. I, I think at some point we've all had the that game. I'm like, well, is it? Yeah. Oh, no. Mm. And I, you, you, uh, you get hopeful sometimes. You're like, oh, uh, no. Yeah, though, though uh, uh, there's a development we're going to be talking about a bit, little bit later that answered my question for me. So, why well, yes, other than I am talking about Rise of the Triad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for me it was the uh, the mention of um, uh, Borderlands Three because I tried not to start Borderlands Three. Nope. Uh, I, I tried to start it, uh, and with the previous versions of Proton GE. They at some point the game would just freeze. It was it wouldn't it wouldn't be like a complete hang because you could still hear like the background audio going. So that was still effectively working, but the actual video would be frozen. And with the regular Proton, since it doesn't have any of the media foundation bits, it you just couldn't progress because you couldn't watch a fucking cutscene. I'm not joking. Uh so they mentioned it here that uh Apparently, the start of Borderlands 3 has actually been fixed, so... Hey! I was, I was able to play it with me on the free weekend, so maybe I was I just wasn't running into that. The other thing they, they added here that is just make, continuing to give me the meat sweats is they keep fixing Baldur's Gate 3. I'm like, I don't want to pay $80 for early access. Oh, you will, baby. But mm. I will. Yeah. It, it's that scene from Key and Peele where, like, he's just sweating constantly. <laughs> Every time they're like, oh, yeah, we fixed another thing. Sweat intensifies. Uh. I think Pedro's problem with Borderlands 3, you just need to install two Epic Game stores. It, need, it needs to make a, it makes a directory <laughs> in his home folder, and he's just really uh, buttered. It, it actually doesn't, but uh, no, the other th uh, issue that I have with Proton GE is one of the ones that they actually bring up. Uh, the known issue, as in the full screen hack, uh, that Proton, the official Proton does, they've disabled that for Proton GE. And that full screen hack is amazing because even if a game say wants to start at 640 by 480 instead of uh changing the resolution of the monitor as it tries to do a um exclusive full called. screen yeah it doesn't because proton doesn't allow that it just goes no you have this glx context you can uh, render however you want to we will full screen it for you but we will take care of the window management that's amazing i wish Proton GE would get that working because that's one of, if not the selling feature for uh, just basic Proton for me. It just doesn't matter if you're not happy, ask for a refund. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay, we got to think about this, man. One thing, um, Vulcans love their thunder and, um, and thunder. tanks. There, there's like two things. You, when you see a Vulcan, you're like, there's going to be thunder. There's going to be tanks. Oh, 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 oh man. I, I, was, I was watching that episode of DS9 where um, where they go back in time to Area 51. It's like, we know all about where Earth. Baseball, root beer, atomic bombs, Earth. That's, yeah. that's what that reminds me of. So, there's a new update to War Thunder. It's out. You can play with it. Um, this is about the new engine, all the other stuff, aircraft, and of course, it, it's War Thunder. So, hey, you want to buy a plate? It's free to play. Give us 60 bucks. But it's free. Oh, you want another plane? 60 bucks. Yeah, check that out. Why are we talking about this? Because it's Vulcan, man. They got a little post on their forums. They're like, yo, the client, and it runs at 120. There's that. And you can indeed. I, I took the Pepsi challenge with this. First off, if you want some more Thunder tanks in your life, that's a 32 gig download. Uh, keep that in mind. I'm like that. That's I, I, a, where's the download server for that? Is it like at least reasonably quick? Or I was getting like half a gig, so like 56 megabytes, whatever that is. That's, that's not. That's not too bad. 18 minutes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> hey, first world problems, baby. But um, if you switch to the test client, I set up Mango HUD again. I'm like. Well, look, it says it's doing the Vulcan thing. Ran a benchmark on it. This was on the um, not safe for gaming um, 1920X first gen thread ripper <laughs> with a 2060, not a Zuber. Um, and I put it at uh, 1080p. I was getting 181 average on Pacific War day. That means something to someone out there. They're like, okay, good to know. Then. Um, but yeah, it was only using about uh, 30 to 40 percent of the GPU. You know, normally, I guess I'm used to seeing like DXVK when it's like 99%. I'm like, yeah, smell that silicon. 
<laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it's good. And th- this is the dev server right now. I think the main game, they're trying to get this fixed for the 2.0 release. So uh, if you want to play with other people on like a public server, still, still no go. But I mean, it's, it's good to see. Um, you, th- you think this is them trying to like, OK, now that we have Vulcan working under Linux, let's go to Android and get that. No, they're, they're no? Into, I'm sure they'll go to the switch. The switch, probably not. I don't Epi- know. Epic Game Store via the switch. <laughs> you just got to think. There, there are definitely um, people who are not brought up as um, direct X monkeys. Like I go with everything, but as a logical developer, game developer, and you're looking for like sustainability. You're like we need to figure this Vulcan thing out because we're just going to do it mm-hmm. once ish. Hi Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Or uh, do it twice, one for uh, Windows on PC and one for uh, Windows on the Xbox, because DirectX 12. No, oh, but you see, you see the, the new ARM, the, the, the M1 compatible Windows is going to have a different DirectX 12 that you're going to have to target. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you know what? You know what? I'll eat cold popcorn if I can see. Uh, I want to see what Microsoft tries to pull off there. On, yeah, yes. on arm they're like right, well, what are you gonna do you're gonna do something dumb we know that i just want to see what it is um we do have a couple of game updates uh blast from the past we were talking earlier like what the hell it's been a year <laughs> since this came out right it was lgc 381 that we threw chairs at eight dragons uh and uh, i think i was the most lenient uh of <laughs> Of the three of us, as I usually am, uh, go figure. But yeah, it's uh, they put out an update and they changed. I think they changed the GUI a little bit, and I think they screwed up the screenshots as they posted them to the uh, the announcement article because the new ones. It's like, oh, to this, everything is blurrier. Uh, D- that, how can you? That tell? doesn't look good. <laughs> I mean. Uh, yeah, it's probably just a compression issue that they didn't resize the screenshots properly well, uh, yeah, and before and they posted them. Yeah, I'm looking like I'm A-being these things, man. I mean, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. I don't. I don't know. It would mm. help if they were. I, it would help if they were like the same image. Yeah. Right. But the, the uh, only thing that they changed was actually the bit along the top, the uh, the HUD. Uh, that that that's it. That was the only significant change that I could see outside of the blurriness. But uh, yeah, it's. I assume you can still turn off all of the like uh, CRTness and screen effects and the blurriness. Yep. You can disable those. Uh, but yeah, they also introduced a couple of new game mechanics moves. Y- you, know, you know what they you know what they didn't introduce? <laughs> Network multiplayer. Amen. Uh, no, 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 that's <laughs> you, not. Yeah. You should be grateful. There's Steam Play. Deal with it, fucko. Yeah, um, gotta remote play your way, baby. <laughs> It'll add an extra layer of <laughs> anti-lacing and pixels. It'll be more retro. Listen, no, like I, I don't know. Honestly, if they patched in network multiplayer to this fucking game, I would be willing to give this another shot. I, I just like that it, it, you just do like a, a dash P one. It's just network multiplayer. Like, oh, all right, done. Yeah, well, yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, you can dash. There's a bonus dash in there, so that's a new mechanic. You can punch both ways when dashing or something like that. I don't know. I mean. This game had a lot of potential, I felt. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember playing Double Dragon on the Master System, and I loved that game. I wanted someone else always around so I could play that game with someone, because that was fun. And this could have been it. And that's why you got a little brother. Yeah. (laughs) I wasn't consulted on that particular decision. You should have shut up about not having a one in a (laughs) brain just went to a super dark place when you brought that up i'm yeah. like wait a second what no ah, no ah. it's a family show man it's a family let's show let's talk about put, put the sweater back on let's talk about uh, one new game we have this week though yeah i, I was looking through uh, i was looking through some of the new releases um and i noticed that fantasy grounds unity was available what? and uh it's a yeah, it's a, it's another virtual tabletop. It's done oh, in Unity. Oh, okay. okay. The, the, this is the Unity version of Fantasy Grounds. And if you scroll down, if you want, if you had the OG non-Unity version of Fantasy Grounds, <laughs> and you want to get the Unity version of Fantasy Grounds, it's like two hundred bucks. It's ridiculous. Um, but I know a lot of people like swear by this for playing their tabletop RPGs. And um, it's we, we were talking about uh, board games last week. 
Uh, people want to play board games. They don't have access. People want to pay a lot of money for this stuff. Like it's real expensive. And they do the train. <gasps> Holy browse right. all 1,736. Because the original version had all of that already well, built well, in. <laughs> no, actually, it it did it did not. These are all these are all licensed adventures from Paizo or from Wizards of the Coast, and so like oh they're priced. They're, they're, <laughs> they're priced worse. <laughs> right? They're they're priced equivalent to the physical copies of it. I checked. Um, but yeah, like this is this is the really expensive version that's cross platform. Normally, I suggest people play using Roll Twenty because it's the even the paid option is reasonably priced, but. There's a cross-platform version now. I'm happy that they are at least considering Linux users who play Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. But it does require. You'd think um, there'd be a lot of overlap yeah. there. Yeah. Share yeah. model 4.0 and a graphics card with DX10 for your Linux. 20 gigs yeah. of space recommended. That's a lot of board. <laughs> yeah. Does someone is. just copy paste it? <laughs> hey man. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, got a price tag on it. But it de it definitely does. Uh, legit question: Can you make money from this? Um, if you are a content creator, no, the people who are making money for it can have like partnerships with fantasy grounds. Well, that's what I want. Usually when I see pricing like that, I'm like, do people buy this and like charge people to come play or something? I don't know. It's honest question. Uh, I, th I think, uh, only one person needs to buy the modules and then like everyone connects to his client and they play on there, but like, yeah. And you'll also need a sound card if you want to talk to each other. Yes, yeah. you, you, because Discord doesn't exist. Oh, this is kill Discord at the moment you start it up. <laughs> Maybe. <Nah. laughs> Allegedly. Who knows? <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it, it's available as, as someone who likes the dungeons and or dragons. There's an option on Steam for you. I, was, I actually had to set up Tabletop Simulator for someone the other day. I'm like, oh, this is real basic. Okay, hurry Anyways. Up. Scott's going to throw more bits at us if you don't get it done. All right, fine. <laughs> Coming up next, we talk about AMD being over 6,000. Vegeta, what, is, what does the scatter say? And we, uh, I suppose we need to talk about the uh, gaming news that don't necessarily involve Steam, but we will get to that. We need to take a little bit of a break in between these two segments to justify... Well, to justify to ourselves that... Uh, to justify our existence? Listen, yeah. man, Pedro, Pedro <laughs> is all about bananas and business. That's it. <laughs> we need to be on bananas. the internet for reasons. Neck and uh, I, I was actually trying to come up with a reason all the way through that, and I couldn't. So, yeah, yeah reasons... You know, you know, if you if you want to come up with your own reasons for supporting us, I think that's ideal because I can't think of one either. But if you do come up with something, <laughs> head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Click that click that support button. Uh, pl pledge like a dollar. You get access to our um, our Discord channel. You get access to the pre pre super shows, which is an extra hour of Linux Gamecast content every week. Uh, you can RSVP for game streams. Give us a little bit more money. Make make the penguin twerk a little bit, and you can get access. I'm to not going to make the penguin twerk. Shut your whore mouth. <laughs> Coming soon next week. Twerking <laughs> cash penguins. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. It's put it put it on a shirt. Remember, kids. Safe search off. Off. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, you get you get early access to videos. Ven posts uh, like early interfacing Linux versions on the Patreon. Oh yeah, baby! Uh, if you we got a tsunami of like brand new hot stuff. I mean, if you want access to our shows like wicked early, especially this one, if you want to watch that tomorrow, like three hours for everyone else. But you get your own custom show. But yeah, I usually put out interfacing Linuxes. Anything that I'm working on. One thing that I'm going to be working on. These two are going to be watching early. Is OBS audio basics. How to set up your noise gates, your compressions, your limiters. For your individual at home streaming setup, because let's face it, you don't want to do anything complex, and I'll show you how to move the sliders around and optimize your vocal bit delivery. Jordan, it'll even help him out because man, he's got range, just nothing in the middle. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm I'm high, I'm low, not very medium. I'm I'm an extreme individual. But we got a store. Store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy some t-shirts, you can buy some stickers, you can, can buy, I buy twerking penguins. Not yet, but store's maybe soon. Bullshit. I don't know. Maybe soon. I don't know. You're you're the guy God in charge of the it, merch. <laughs> Mike G found a twerking penguin. Shake <laughs> that ass. Uh, yeah, we we got we got coffee mugs. I need to, I, I need to increase. I need to improve my coffee mug game. I need to order a coffee mug. From here. You can get a hot uh, mug. Yeah, I can fill it with mayo and sip that casually. I can finally the buy one of those um, hoodies. <laughs> no, dude, a one on one like, chair hoodie. That, that's how you, that's how you know you like somebody really likes you when they you, you come over to their house and they break out the sipping mayo. 
<laughs> wait, wait, can I can I can I offer you a a, a snifter of mayo? Yes. <laughs> I am not responsible um, for any medical bills. Oh, any that's good mayo. mayo. We we got we got wish lists. <laughs> Amazon.com. Uh, they're on there. You can go to linuxgamecast.com. Yeah. There's a support tab that has all the links to that stuff. Um, I got some stuff on there. Pedro has some stuff on there. Then has some stuff on there for the studio. If you buy stuff for the studio, you get your name on the hard to read blinky board up there. That's pretty nice. Uh, you get your name in the credits for just supporting us, period. So, you know, we got we got yeah. we got to thank all you guys. You make this possible. You 100% make it possible. We don't have ads. Um, we're never going to be like super. We're not going to be selling out. Let's just put it that way. Not unless <laughs> someone offers us like six plus figures. <laughs> then we'll sell out. Or or they're called Microsoft. Microsoft. Like, <laughs> if you just give me money and say promotes, but you let me write the script. And you have, there's no bans on like emoliation. We're good. No. <laughs> we'll do that commercial. It'll be brilliant. No, just buy, buy us out wholesale, Microsoft. Just like, no, no more LGC. Here's $2 billion. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Linux Game BCS admits to selling to Microsoft. Yeah, great. So let's talk about AMD's got some hot new cards and uh, turns out uh, paper launch. Oh my uh, God! Well, we're, yeah, <laughs> we're we're not talking about Nvidia first. What is this? Have you been replaced by replicants? Yep. Yeah. Well, the, to be fair, the big release uh, this week was the uh, 6800 and the 6800 XT, which were supposed to be available, but are not uh, because this is 2020 that we're living in and uh well some reviewers that get their heads on them and uh wendell from level one text was very much one of them and um the if you click on the link in the show notes uh he also links the uh level one Linux video about the 6800 and in that video he basically says it is the best um on release um Linux compatibility that we've ever seen from the oh it's been removed apparently. <laughs> no the, uh, the 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 embed the embed link is right the link in the article is wrong oh okay yeah uh, I, I ran into that earlier today yeah but the yeah the they um they read it through the courses and uh they did some vfio because it's level one text and they always do like the vfio if you want to um pass the uh, gpu through to a vm and they did some native uh, actual linux gaming and yeah according to wendell it is the best experience that we've ever had with amd on linux but they're not available because it figures that the one time that AMD would actually get it right and get it working on release on Linux, the damn GPUs wouldn't be available. Yeah, I'm surprised have it, that they actually do have some release driver <laughs> support. This has been a recurring problem, with, especially with the open source drivers. I suppose like our DNA 2 is architecturally similar to what was already out there. So they could just reuse the same code and just be like, yo. The driver's fine. Um, I hope that AMD can keep this up with their newer hardware releases because it's nice that they can do it one time, but once does not make a pattern. You got to do it multiple times. NVIDIA has been really, really good about making sure that the minute you can buy that 3070 Super Ti Titan edition, <laughs> uh, there, there, are, there is a driver that you can download so that you can use your card. Um, AMD GPU Pro has not met that promise. Mm. Mesa has gotten okay, but you got to run some bleeding edge shit. So it's nice to see that the driver is sustainable enough. And you definitely still time. run into issues on AMD. Like if you're going to be running like DaVinci Resolve or um, 3D modeling CAD CAM software, you have to install the pro drivers. Did uh, Wendell make any mention of their hardware silicon for encoding on these new cards? Did he bother to test uh, any of that? Not that I heard, no. AMD, <laughs> call me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'll do it begrudgingly because I'm qualified to do it. But yeah, stuff like that for streaming I mean, mm -hmm. has has Vampy improved, and what can you get out of it? What's the advantages? But um, yeah, it, by all intents and purposes, man, Nvidia has got a competitive product on their hand, or well, a competitor on their hand, I should say. Yes. Yeah, AMD yeah. like walked out, and they're like, "But <laughs> is it fair?" Because we've all seen it. We've all seen it this week. We're like, oh, it cost money. And they have a competitive product and they're charging money for it. Pedro, I why, why isn't cheap now? Yeah, no, I'll save the price for the, um, after we get to the 3060 supposed pricing. Oh, man. I, 
<laughs> I mean, we, we've seen this with like the new AMD CPUs that are rolling out and anybody wants to try to get on my dick, get the fuck off. I got a wall. I've been buying AMD only since the K5. So, and I paid the hard price for fucking thread, thread rubber. I think it's perfectly fair. I think these are 16 gig cards too, man. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like 60 I bucks more now. Uh, okay. Now if it, by what I've read, like if you, are the one person that has a big raging clue for ray tracing get the nvidia card but um uh, yeah the, yeah the amd cards only support the xr which means that say you got one for linux and you tried to run quake 2 uh it wouldn't work it doesn't support vulcan yeah yeah <laughs> but i mean you could also just play regular quake 2 not no. the rtx no, <laughs> no. hey uh if we're going to give AMD some love we need to do kind of roll back and talk about what we were talking about last week is the rumors of a 36 this thing is not a fucking rumor I saw one in a box the other day uh, earlier this morning um, it came to me shelf. yeah yeah. If, I, <laughs> if that was mine it'd be on eBay right now uh, 36 DTI it's faster than an RTX 2080 Super but unlike ah. the new AMD cards it's only got 8 gigajoules of video memory RAM mm, I don't know man I mean, that listen, works I, for me. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I was looking at that thirty seventy. Okay, it's like, oh, first off, yeah. Pedro, I've already called dibs on it. You're not allowed to get one. <laughs> I think we can both have it. Nope. Uh, considering that none of us will have it at release because nope. scalpers. <laughs> also, I will. No, you you have a hey, ten eighty. Pedro is one hundred percent going to pay a scalper for that card. He I know. Is. He no, is. I'm not. <laughs> I don't have the money for you, that. We're looking at the <laughs> super low resolution um, from Tweaktown, uh, courtesy of videocards.com. So, yeah, the 3060 Ti is, uh, if we're looking how much faster, uh, scientific performance metric, I would say hella compared to uh, the uh, 50%. Super. Yeah, in some yeah. cases. I mean, your miles will most <laughs> definitely vary, but... Yeah, th- these are these are all uh, rasterizing, ray tracing, right. rendering. The 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 yep. gaps are the gaps are a lot smaller on the rasterizing and the rendering stuff, but like yeah, ray mm-hmm. tracing for sure. It's a lot. Give me better on, Nvidia. Give me one with twelve gigs. I don't need fourteen. I don't need twenty. Twelve. I I, I will pay more. Okay. Go. Cool. No, I mean <laughs> I I will cut if they can get me one for if you can get me in and out for like four hundred bucks. That's the big one. Nah, that's the yeah. price right there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, because like, I'm having this wonderful bit of schadenfreude where I bought the 1080 Ti and they're like, oh yeah, 2060, it's more powerful than 1080 Ti, get fucked. And now everyone who bought like a 2080 Ti is like, oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but they've been able to laugh at your 1080 Ti for an entire year. Yeah, Three but years. now I get to laugh. I get to laugh at them back. It's it's the circle of laugh. Not really. Now they're just, they, they just feel sympathy for you at this point. I'm like, aw. <laughs> Right. I, I, I still get to laugh, though. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, That's no, it. the um, again, this whole should be taken with a great assault because yeah. the uh, slides were leaked by video cards. And yeah, the, 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 they dwell on rumors. They profit off of rumors. So, yeah, uh, oh, the, yeah it inflates that stock price for sure. Yep. The supposed price of the 3060 or 3060 Ti or whatever the fuck they end up calling it uh, is going to be supposedly around 399 MSRP. Mm -hmm. If that price holds, that's probably what I'm going to buy because the 1080 rasterization wise uh, performs about on par with the 2060 Super. So what what about Rasta rasation? (laughs) <laughs> it, just, it just turns into a, Jap- uh, a Jamaican guy. Yeah. We do have some good news, though, man. On the NVIDIA front, we got some hot steamy drivers. Nothing terribly impressive. Um, at glance, this is 455.45.01. A couple of mentions. Um, they fixed some Vulcan blending optimization issues in Life is Strange 2 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But uh, there's also a little fix with the uh, full screen issues with G Sync monitors connected. What got me excited was. Lads, I'm, I might have missed the memo on this, but uh, this not only does it compile against kernel 5.9, CUDA also works. So I can oh, nice. eventually resolve and everything. And I was like, ooh, yay, squee. I ran NVIDIA SMI and it reported it clean. And I was like, awesome. Do you think that's actually listed on the CUDA, on the next CUDA release? And they just like... The CUDA? They're, they're, 
the cooter release. Yeah, <laughs> well, some advanced the, cooter technology. Oh, Barracuda. Yeah, the cooter. If, I mean, if the real thing don't do the trick, you better make up something quick. How many cooters burn, does it burn? Have in burn. It? burn. <laughs> two, two cooters. Tensor cooters. <laughs> Barracuda. Um, no, that's pretty cool. I, I'm glad that you know I went ahead and combined. That was the only thing stopping me from uh, building 5.8 because previously it wasn't. But yeah, 5.9 did that. Then Black Magic's like, "Yo, hey, we can build against 5.9 too." I'm like, "Yay!" So I just compiled 5.9, set it up, and it ran. That's brilliant. Good to see. It makes me happy. Open source some drivers in video. Rawr. Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> the last ones they open source were the header files for Pascal. And you should be grateful. You That's it. That, that, that right. was the last of them. <laughs> Go back Eat to your, shit, Linux. What are you going to do? Install an Intel Z? Huh? Shut up. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. We'll have to wait for 2021 for that. <laughs> no, no, you're going to have to wait till 2022 because of scalpers. What do you think of the meantime? Oh, yeah. Would be able to uh, <laughs> possibly get, get some like hot ray tracing action going on? Maybe. So this is from Josh's blog, froggy.es.espanol. Um, yeah, and he's talking about uh, D3D12 API trace uh, at capture and replay. Now, this is really useful um, because, you know, when you're, when you're working on games or trying to get games running under Linux using VKD3D Proton, you know, sometimes there's some easy anti-cheat involved. They're like, oh, you're, you're, you're doing some shit to video memory? Banned! So having the ability to record uh, to record GPU operations and play them back, it makes it really, really helpful to diagnose and debug driver issues. And uh, Josh goes through the whole process of how this is how this works. It's like a really big deep dive. A lot of it just goes over my head because I'm not a graphics programmer. Although if you are interested, you should definitely give this a read. Um, so apparent the, the thing that interested me though he's like oh yeah i got uh, assassin's creed valhalla running with this <laughs> i'm like well fuck now i gotta wait for the next vkd 3d proton release in order for that to happen um but this this will also help getting the ray tracing stuff up and running because now you have a reliable way to say like okay this thing broke i can capture when it broke and i can run it against the new driver to see if it will work this time um and uh, that that's just super hap- or super useful from a development perspective. Um, and yeah, n- now that this is in place, now that they have the capability, we're going to be start we're going to start seeing a lot more progress on the DX12 Linux front, which is the future. And apparently, what I need to fucking play games that come with my motherboard. So hey, man, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Josh well actually me on um oh. on Twitter. Oh. It, it was fucking adorable. Is what it was. Um, <laughs> I, I just always made a post. He's like, I wrote a blog about something. I'm like, ah, oh, it's pretty fucking interesting. That's such a little way. I was like, the rays, it traces the vision. Like, it doesn't really trace rays. Just, I'm like, come on. It's a joke, man. Come on. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you can capture the trace rays, but come on. <laughs> and he didn't even tell me what his favorite soup was. I don't know, man. <laughs> Frog but, soup. Apparently, it doesn't involve frogs because he seems to really, really, really like frogs. Maybe That's he likes good. to eat frogs. He's been doing a lot of <laughs> awesome work with that. So uh, it, it's just like when, when you think, it's like, oh, we're good. We're big. It's shit like this is getting worked on. You're like, oh, there's more. There's more. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, but, but wait, there's more. Yeah. I was, I was Billy, make, Billy Mays here. <laughs> Billy Mays. <laughs> Zombie Billy Mays here. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been a while since we've uh, been able to say humble. there's a humble bundle, but it's also kind of good. No? Yeah, it's the humble <laughs> sweet farm fall bundle, and um, for for a buck you can get out there and toe jam and Earl back in the groove. Out there both actually looks Linux pretty games. interesting. <laughs> yeah, both of them are native Linux games. Out there looks pretty interesting, and for a buck, I'm willing to try that out. Um, pay more than the average, you get super hot Moonlighter, uh, Churchill, which is not a Linux game, but you could try to get it running under wine. Yeah, two and out of three the, on the middle uh, one, and on the on the top one, fifteen sixty six Canadian or more, uh, and you can get um, Sigma Theory, which is the only native Linux game on that tier. But you can also grab a Hat in Time, Coffee Talk, and Necronator, which is not the thing I thought was going to be the end of that word, but you know, here we are. You also get the bonus to Gem and Earl. Now I'm going to be honest. I was kind of curious because I, I, first let's just be honest. I completely forgot that was a Linux game, but I know we covered it way back mm-hmm. when it came out. I had the exact same experience as I had on the mega drive. When I played to Gem and Earl for that one, I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to be doing? It was just like <laughs> old times. I'm like, what the fuck? all right. Hey, it works. So it's a great game. Hat in time. Uh, played around with that on Proton. A uh, little cartoony for me. 
but uh, I've been waiting for Super Hot. Super Hot's been one of those, like, I like to dick around with that, but I wouldn't like to dick around with that for 20 bucks because I know it's probably something that's going to play for like 10 minutes and never touch again. I got my 10 minutes out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super Hot's real fun in VR. That's I, 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 I do like the uh, the loophole of having Sigma the, Theory at the, uh, the high level. The poop hole loophole? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so Fuck that you can, oh, I'm no, no, I'm totally backing up the uh, pay more than the average level or the um, 10 pounds level, as it happens to be here. Uh, for Sigma Theory, it's totally not because I've had a hat in time in my Steam wish list for years now, and this is, was the cheapest that I've ever saw it at. So Really, yeah. the only thing I know about like a hat in time <laughs> was um, I've seen some just game-breaking speedruns of it. Like, okay, it's mm-hmm. kind of interesting. Um, yeah. It's there. It runs. Uh, go spend money. If you want to kick us some coin, we get a referral link on the web zone uh, under support. That'd be awesome if you bought through that. And if you do it right now while we're live, you'll pop up on the screen and be like, oh my God, you spent money. Oh but my God. Here's a project we've pretty much been following for nine years. Yeah. Right? Yep. <laughs> That's one of the first things I remember when I started watching um, Linux Gamecast before I ended up here. Sucker. Was- Open MW, uh, and yeah, this one is not a new, uh, release. It is the autumn in review. Basically, what, it, what they did from September to October 2020. And there's a lot. Uh, they, uh, kind of single out developers and what they've been working on. Uh, Peter Mikihev, uh, has been working on imp- uh, improving the I was animations reading, and like, everything. through it, and I get to like one point, I'm like, we're kind of this one guy. Then, then he showed back up, kicked the door in, and he's like, it's fixed, fuckos. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yep. Uh, there's a lot of that. There, there are a lot of developers that go in and out because they have other things or real life catches up to them and they need to do something else for a while, which I get. I totally get. Life uh, comes out yeah, no, they've, uh, they've been improving like uh, the third person uh, and general character animations, making them smoother, make the whole movement seem a lot less stilted. Uh, they have been working with the uh, T uh, TS3 MP, the oh that old that old multiplayer thing. Yes, support. That one. Yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. the multiplayer people. They've been getting in touch with them and trying to get it to work properly with OpenMW, which is very nice. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, all, that's have... always been a cool thing about the OpenMW project is like they're working with the guys who are trying to reverse engineer all the assets as well. Mm-hmm. They're working with uh, they're working with the multiplayer guys. I, I like the ecosystem that is sort of forming around this. Dude, I want uh, multiplayer in OpenMW because I want to play the water or the fog. I want I, I want like multiplayer in OpenMW because <laughs> that eventually means that when Open Skyrim shows up in the year twenty seven thousand, right. it will have network multiplayer, right? Yeah, yeah the, the, about that. No, uh, they also added support for the LZ4 uh, files, which Bethesda used for uh, Skyrim Special Edition and Fallout 4, since they those two basically work on the same version of the engine. So it can open those now too. So I still want my open oblivion so that you could have Fallout 3 in New Vegas and I'll do a full playthrough of New Vegas once that works. Are you going to um, play as yourself? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to do it in very much the same way that I did uh, it, all roads the lead open to MW campaign. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you, no. Need, you, need, you need to role play it as Ven. The best thing in the world I thought was watching I can't do Pedro. The voice, though. Pedro did an entire playthrough of Open MW, and I'm, there's one, one great stream where he's straight up just fucking arguing with the developers as they're as they're watching the stream. <laughs> it was their fault for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why open mw development has halted yes. the end <laughs> but it hasn't it clearly hasn't just you coming up next <laughs> now um i mean i mean do we, we still have stuff we want to say about uh ottoman i mean i do they, they added some uh automated build coverage uh, which is nice um if they can get an automated testing framework in place this will really speed up the development though um if they can get unit tests done uh but you know having a build system where you can go grab the latest release is nice Makes it yeah. easier for Strider, at least. Yoink. Yeah. And on that shell. And on that shell of Pedro face. Up next, we're uh, throwing chairs at Butcher. Not Billy Butcher. Man, could you imagine if this was Billy Butcher the game? Oh, 
Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week, we're reviewing the video game adaptation of The Boys. No, we're not. We're throwing chairs at Butcher. It's done by Transhuman Desi Design and Crunchy Koalas, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about uh, 10 37 Oh, it's UK Crunchy dollars. Ko Koalas, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they tried to uh, hire me to be in a game for them. Excellent. Yeah. Um, there, um, yeah, uh, it's what, 10, 10 bucks on Steam about? Uh, it was free on GOG this week, so yeah, you may have picked it up there. Uh, that's how we got our copies. Yeah. Um, so I, I got a copy on Steam, but more than that at 11. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, well, we'll, we'll get to that. Why don't you start us off? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Why don't fine. you <laughs> be like, do it. I will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's. Let's talk about a story because have you ever really wanted to play like a 2D Doom man inspired, you know, definitely Doom inspired bullet hell action pew pew game. This is going to have you covered. Also, I got to throw in bitch. You like pixels? Well, damn, this is going to in fact be the game for you, man, because you want to step right up. Take a look at the video. Audio listeners, I'm sorry. And try to figure out which brown blob your silly ass is, man, because this is straight out of 2016 and kind of looks at i mean this was like peak pixel hipsterness man <laughs> this is when the hipster pixel peaked baby but again hipster pixel shut up um <laughs> <laughs> it is 2016 it does kind of show in the fact that it's an older linux port and uh so when i launched it you know it slammed right into the, my leftmost monitor and activated smurf mode which told me oh this is old unity yay what happens when i alt oh lord it, it's just full screen okay if i keep it in a window maybe drag the window then alt tab scoot it across hey it worked but hey at least the controller worked didn't expect that even worked on the gog version but um i ended up getting it on steam because i wanted to play it without any hassle and i ended up using the proton compatibility layer so proton preservation strikes again on this one okay those chunky brown pixels Man, they look crisp at 2160p and i'm proud to report that the um nvidia 2060 and the thread ripping 1950 uh, were able to keep it running at 60. No issues there. Um, I do like it. Uh, I really enjoy the nonstop screaming, the sweetest mm. of all background music. That really, because they don't shut up. Like at some point, after you clear out an arena, I'm like, shh. <laughs> Seriously. But no, like, oh, am I leaving? But uh, I hear you. I hear you. Like, but then, was it fun? Yeah, you know what? You know what? It's all right. I mean, let's be honest. This is hipster pixel, but if, if this wasn't pixel, this motherfucker would be rated NC-17 because it's violent. Man. There, there's some gifts. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, they, they really <laughs> managed to get across, like, this is just extra violent for fuck all reason, which I don't have a problem with. But, you know, cutesy pixels, you, you can't be mad at that. And you're like, aw. Look at the intros. Aw, it's a thing, man. Um, you know, like it or not, evisceration by Chainsaw is just flying spaghetti monster. Damn adorable when pixelated. Just face facts. At the end of the day, what is it, man? It's that 2D arena shooter, and it works with a controller. Like you can play it with a controller. I did now the default, the default mapping for the controller is batshit insane, but it's something you can get used to and you can understand why it why it was laid out like that and you get good at a point you know after about four or five levels and you start feeling it i understand i understand why people would like this um you do have to overcome the almost permanent character blindness but you tend to focus more on uh not where your character is it's more where your reticule is floating around and one well, when your brain meat sorts that out it's good i liked it so much i even went to steam and bought a copy as I said, because I wanted to continue playing it with a little bit of Proton, and uh, so it just kind of worked out of the box, man. I'm happy with it. Um, it's not a perfect game by any means, and yeah, it shows its age, but you know, it was trying to show its age, and it's definitely Doom-inspired, man. You know, color palette, you know, the little slidey screens, you press a button to receive bacon. Yeah, I'll give it a solid three. Yeah, and over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080 and the, well, running this all on KDE Neon, it launched out of the box and it went to the wrong screen. 
<laughs> and it just kind of sort of hung around the dark blue screen of nope that is very typical of like um old unity and i do not miss that one bit uh it, but to be fair, even old Unity, it held 144 at 2560 by 1440. I didn't bother trying with the controller because it's like, no, we need to be shooting uh, with precision here. So I'm not even going to bother with that. Uh, and you can really hear in just exactly how much pain the not quite dead enemies are when you shoot half of their body off. That... <laughs> It's nonstop. It's like five minutes later, and you're like, "Shut up!" I, yeah, I it's like, that, "Come on!" I just make that noise on my own, so I didn't. I didn't really hear that. <laughs> but yeah, the do uh, the uh, the Doom inspired music certainly fits the theme that they're going for, and well, I guess that gets us on to the fun, because the theme here is what if old Doom but two D platformer, and um. <laughs> There's wearing your inspirations on your sleeve, and then there's whatever the hell Butcher is doing. Uh, the difficulty curve is a hockey stick. So if you've ever seen a hockey stick, it goes... Never, uh, never heard of one. Nope. Yeah, no, especially not you, Canadian. Uh, the, <laughs> the tutorial and the first set of levels are piss easy. They're seriously really easy to just get through and then the moment you start the second um set of levels the difficulty just goes aha fuck you L lulled you into a false sense of security and now i'm just going to fuck with you and yeah no the ai at that point is basically damn merciless and what you're watching right now on video is that second set of levels get it's good yeah seriously you need to get good or you're just not going to make any progress uh, and the good thing is, all of the levels are pretty short, so yeah, you it, it's one of those games that you can just as easily obsess over for an hour or two at a time, or just play a level, get murked all the time, give up, and then come back later, play it another 30 minutes, and maybe get through two or three levels at a time. It's, you know, I'm not entirely sure I'll keep playing it, but it is an alright game. I absolutely get the, uh, the gist of it and uh, what it is that makes it so damn fun. So, yeah, three chairs. Three chairs is not bad, but what does the Canadian think of it? <laughs> uh, a lack of hockey stick <laughs> intelligence. My hockey stick is, you know what, never mind. Uh, so I tested this on uh, Fedora 3364 bit with the i7 6700K and the uh, RX uh, 5700 XT. I also gave this a shot on Fedora 32 with the Ryzen 9 3900 X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Um, yeah, uh, they both launch out of the box. However, on AMD, it fucks up a little on the first launch, so you got to restart the game. But, you know, after that, it's fine. Um, yeah, also, really likes to start on the wrong monitor. Uh, one thing I did notice... Uh, um, is on the desktop. If you drag the shortcut over to the other monitor and launch it from that monitor, it selects the correct monitor. Whatever. Um, yeah, the DualShock straight up just doesn't work with the GOG version. I tried the Switch Pro controller as well, and I could get around in the menus, but you can't move around in the game. Maybe maybe the Steam version is a little better on that. I don't know. Um, the default controls, though, they bad. They're they're bad. Up is not jump. I'm sorry. You cannot convince me otherwise. You can remap everything though, and that does work. Uh, so that's nice. Art style. Dear God, the fucking character blindness. My lord. Yeah. <laughs> this game's what. When you make a hipster pixel game, you need to make sure that like your character is clearly visible in a sea of enemies and effects. The color palette here is like red and brown, so it's not really re lending it for that. Soundtrack's bumping though, I'm a big fan of it. Um, and yeah, I can see how this would be fun. Once you unfuck the controls, it plays like a doom shmupping platformer, which is all right, I guess. I just like to know where my character is at a given moment, so I stop dying. Um, and yeah, um, running around shooting people is fun up until you lose yourself. Um, but it's it's like Doom in that you need to have like super good reflexes, or you need to play the levels enough to memorize the enemy placement so that you can shoot them before they spawn. Um, and like the difficulty there, uh, the difficulty is there, so that that's good. I don't know. Um, it seems like it could be like a fairly decent fitting tribute to like Doom, uh, doing like a like a two D version, sort of like Half Life two D. Maybe it will do this. Maybe it will do it for you. It didn't really do it for me. I, I just found it 
uh, kind of unpolished experience. I can definitely see where they're going, and they definitely have the aesthetic down. They How have did the, you get dead by that blade, Major? You weren't paying attention. Because I wasn't paying attention. There we go. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. that, that, that's this game. Why would I die? Oh, there was something there, and I wasn't looking at that exact part of the screen. Excellent. <laughs> but it all looks red and brown, so how do I know what to look at? I mean, yeah, like it doesn't really do it for me. I think I think for some people this will be their jam. Uh, but for me it was not. I'll give it two cheers though, because it's a it's a good effort, solid effort. So final thoughts on this. Um I'm gonna say if it's currently free on GOG, so if you want to go through that, I it was. Oh, it's not a was. Okay. They gave <laughs> womp, it away. Womp. Pick it up on seventy five percent off now. <laughs> Pick it up on Steam if you get a chance. If this is something because the way it's broken down with the levels, you pick it up, play it, put it down. It's not a big yep. issue, and uh, if you have any problems in the film, it runs fine under Proton. And you got to admit, man, this thing's so butcher. I'm surprised it didn't call me a cunt. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, it very much fits the theme and the character. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Coming up next. Oh my God! They're deleting all the vods, but don't oh, no. worry. We have a solution for you. And if you're done with your butchering, uh, I know I'm not because there's a whole new segment for me to butcher the English language on. So if chop, you'd chop. like to let me know in what new and improved ways I could possibly do that, you can go to linuxgamecast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form. Uh, LGC Weekly is usually the uh, default, but in case it isn't because you have happen to have some cookies and you've sent us some hate mail in the past or some feedback cookies. for the wednesday show send me uh, cookies yeah i too want cookies to be fair but uh yeah just pick lgc weekly and your hate mail will appear right here right now unless of course we can find the answer to your question on the very first page of google you know what you know what i don't even <laughs> mind that anymore here's the thing Here, here's the true true man when you hit me with those youtube comment questions that are in the theme of maybe what I'm talking about, <laughs> but nothing related to anything in the video. <laughs> Tangential questions, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, but, but, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Pedro's got a new arguing buddy online, and the argument continues because uh, <laughs> Cody sent in a little bit of mail about the VODs, man. We were talking about VODs last week with Twitch, you know, Vodmageddon. And uh, he's like, yo, I keep seeing people choose to erase their Twitch VODs, which is true. When I suggest Odyssey, okay, uh, the response I get is, well, I don't want to upload my VODs to a third-party website, even though that's exactly what YouTube is, BTW. What is the point of crying about having to remove VODs while not accepting that alternative options exist? I don't think I will ever understand people who choose deletion and censorship over the alternative options. What is your opinion on all this? XO, XO, huggy, squiggly mark, Cody. <laughs> so I've not actually uploaded anything to library before. Do they have any like size or pricing requirements? You no, need to no one else has either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it was Retro I tried to watch one of his videos on library because he puts them like a day or a week before uh, on library before who they show this? up on YouTube. Who? And Pedro, who are you talking about? I didn't catch uh, the Retro Men Cave. Thank you. But I said that. I didn't <laughs> hear you. <laughs> it's not my problem. Well, that, that, <laughs> no, it became my problem and I was going to get to the root of this fucking mystery, bitch. <laughs> But yeah, no, I tried watching one of his videos and it got to the, about the halfway point of the video and it just wouldn't load anymore. So I thought, oh, maybe it's like an ad blocker thing and it's blocking, like loading the rest of the video. Fine. I'll uh, disable uh, you block origin, reloaded. It got to that same point, stopped. The fuck? It's a good old days, baby. Seriously. <laughs> so what do we? That about? was about as far as I was willing to give uh, a library a uh, bit of a you know a test, and it failed miserably. Uh -huh. So <laughs> I'm going to be honest, man. Like um, Odyssey's so hipster, I've never even heard of it. Um, <laughs> I've heard people talk about it. I've never actually been there. Here too, well, the only thing I hear about library is because they have some, at least some type of monetization scheme that, you know, everyone's like plugging like, hey, come to whatever library, which is fine, whatever, mm. more power to you. 
Um, there's peer two in like with any peer two instance, like when peer two came out, I'm like, Hey, let's upload. Then you run into, Hey, you're out of space. Give us money. And I'm like, well, I'm just using this for like a free offsite backup. So no, you want to run some ads on it? YouTube, YouTube's like, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, what do we think about, yeah, did you see the new terms of service? I'm sure anyone with YouTube account, YouTube links in. Like, by the way, by the way, if you're not in the um, YouTube partner program, um, we are going to start running ads on your uh, non-monetized videos. To which my first response was, I'm genuinely surprised that's not the first, you haven't been doing that the whole time. Like it, it was yeah, all, it, it always I think they have. They just didn't tell people that they yeah. were. Well, <laughs> it, it's, it's really just to push people over to, to premium, right? Like that's that's it. They're not making. No one's watching the fucking ads. They need to. They need to push the premium subscription. Nobody on certain like our audience is probably guaranteed. To, I mean, we do get uh, a little bit of YouTube red money. I, you know, I subscribe to the YouTube thing just because like I don't have time to like set up YouTube vans and root on my fucking old. So I'm just like fuck it, fuck it. Too much work. I'll just pay for that. But yeah, they went like went back um, a couple of months ago on YouTube and they're like, because when they lowered, it used to be, I think you had to have like 15 minutes long video before you could have like interstitials and like, Mm -hmm. not only did they lower it to, I think it's eight minutes now, but they went back and added ads to everything too. That was um, Mm -hmm. automatically loaded interstitial ads. (laughs) And one thing that takes a minute because we do the uncut series. Now I just released that as is uh, tomorrow morning for patrons, but if I just let it run roughshod, like I laughed at the one I released today publicly, 13 fucking ads in the first hour. Okay. The fuck. 13 <laughs> ads in the first hour, none in the other three. <laughs> I guess they know that people don't watch. <laughs> I yeah. very long. Like, yeah. well, I well, took it down like- to four or five over four hours, Ben. This is. <laughs> Well, like you have to imagine, like after the after the hour mark, it's like, oh, this person is like put as this on in the background. They are not listening. They're not actively listening mm-hmm. to any of this shit. So there's no point in running ads. They're not. They're not listening. It's there to make some noise. I think the real like, moral of the story. I, I said it when you know um, the Twitch D- DMCA Maget didn't happen. Like that is a really really shitty way to learn about having your own backups. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if that's something you're planning on keeping, uh, don't keep all your chainsaws in one basket. Because we can wake up tomorrow and our Twitch account can just be gone and our recourse is nothing. Yes. Same our goes, recourse is eat shit. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Same thing with YouTube. Go fuck yourself. You know? So, yeah. Uh, yeah up, upload it cool. anywhere that'll take it. But, yeah, I don't think... Um, you know, it does boil down to you also want to upload it to places where people might see it yeah that's the big one to cody's point it's like oh yeah when alternative options exist why are you using these two services because that's where people are yeah okay library and odyssey may be a thing but the bulk of the audience if you want to watch a live stream you go to twitch if you want to just watch videos you go to youtube that's it it's, that's where people are. That's where your yeah. audience is. Well, it was the whole thing with like Calabra when uh, a couple of weeks back they did the Steam thing, and then I get and apparently they're following me on Twitch and apparently watching like Wednesday's shows because I it's like yo, you, uh, you put like nine layers between me and the thing I wanted to watch, and why don't you just <laughs> put up a YouTube live? Guess what? The next one here's a YouTube live stream. Yeah. Good because I just want to <laughs> fucking watch it. But mm-hmm. to Katie's point, right at the beginning, you start out saying. You saw people choosing to erase their Twitch. They weren't choosing, Cody. They weren't. No. They were, they, they were, they, they were delivered an ultimatum. Delete it or we're going to, you're yeah. going to lose our protection. Delete it. We're not going to tell you which ones to delete because, you know, quite frankly. Just delete we, them all. Yeah. Just wipe them <laughs> and cross your fingers because they're not even really deleted. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, on that bright, uplifting bombshell, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, we got to get out of here. We're going to roll some credits. Right yeah. after we cue the music, you can always find this nonsense train, this nightmare fuel. You know what you love it. Derail, re-railing. We're starting out on rails because it's a good way to build up movement. Are you way we way on rails? <laughs> We're de-wailing. Re-wailing. Wailing's bad, kids. Um, <laughs> Eight thirty Eastern time. Just head over to twitch.tv forward slash Linux Teamcast. 
hit the schedule. It'll automatically do its thing for you. It'll be awesome. It'll be terrifying. Uh, hour beforehand, if you're a patron, where we have our production meeting, we welcome you to participate. And if you want to scream at me, scream at old man Vin during the week. Do it in Discord. That's where we hang out because that's where you can find us bitching at each other during the week. Or uh, just at Vin Stone on Twitter. Yar, I be Jordan Swung. Me and my harpoon be hunting whales on Twitter at The Burning Fool. Also, check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Burning Fool on Fridays for more world building. I might do some more stuff there. I got some dicking around I want to do, so. And you can find me arguing on the internet at an accounted for on Twitter. At internet. Or at internet <laughs> on twitter.com <laughs> slash internet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, uh, Twitter is the place. If you'd like to uh, do like Cody and uh, just make me argue on the internet, you can absolutely do that. The Twitter is the place to do it, and I will gladly oblige. He will look on at internet. you and silently, <laughs> internally, go, moo. Oh man, look at all these people who are gonna be scrolling across hey, the screen that we gotta Twitch. think. Yeah. Oh yeah. shut but well shut bots are Discord. That's how that works. It's yeah. like bridge together. Anybody who was wondering. Yeah. You gotta thank uh Vigilant Viking, our advisor. We also gotta thank our executive producers, Haplo, Justin, Michael, Jay, Angel M, Bob Ramp, Scott M, Fox Dog, Arthur and Atomic Ass, and Mike G. Also our big little Nikki fans, Darkwing and Empty, and our sea monsters, Jack B, Dementor, Renault, LePage, Ryder, X Machina, and Paul. Thanks to all our death notes, Captain Zero, Dak Kem, Smashly G, Chris, Vera Natura, Joe, I, <laughs> and Steve. And all the chairlings, which I are didn't forget about way Steve. too Go many for to it. list. Yeah, jolly him. Giovanni, Joanna, Steven, Sherry, Egg, Von, Havenstaven, Frieza, Wintercell, Michael, Frieza. Simcha B, Yo, Steven? Damn. Oh, Steven. <laughs> Next Daniel Steve L, Vascat, Dodger, Steve B. And of course, yes, PowerShellAnalytics.com and Library.tv at the Nixon Experiment. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. Baby. Baby, oh, baby, yes. baby, baby. <laughs> Get it just like any baby. Babies go. Come more. on, baby, baby. <laughs> I shot a man, but that man was a baby. Oh, baby, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but did you shoot the deputy? Dynafire, beautiful people. We'll see you next. That time. man was a train. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>